Perfection. Perfection. <laughs> hey, so what is up? I am really giddy with excitement today because I'm here to tell you about a vlog I did. A vlog I did. A vlog I crushed, I think. I don't know. I haven't looked at the footage, but I know that I for sure was a mess. Because for this vlog, I read the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abby, the one of the most popular series I see on TikTok. And I do have a lot of thoughts, which you are definitely going to see in this vlog. I held nothing back. For the most part, this vlog is spoiler free. So if you have not read this series and you would like to know what I think of the entire thing, I'm pretty sure you could watch this vlog and not have anything ruined for you. If you happen to have read the series and would like to know about specific scenes that I had a visceral reaction to. I do have live reaction footage, especially near the end. I do have some parts where I do talk about specific scenes with spoilers, but don't worry, I warn you beforehand, so chill. Unless you're one of those people who think, who thinks that, you know, the synopsis and movie trailers count as spoilers, maybe don't watch this vlog. But yeah, if you're not one of those people, Stay tuned. Also, my hair was like not doing what I needed it to do in a lot of these scenes. So there are a lot of like very close um, facial shots. So if you like a good facial, you might enjoy this. Either way, thank you for clicking on this video um, and keep watching to see if this is my new favorite series of all time, okay? Okay. Hi, well, my lovely friends. Let me just try to get you. My neighbors are literally like having like a shouting match like next door. Should I just like move somewhere else? I don't want them in my- okay, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. Two seconds later. I have recently made a TikTok account. Um, it's at McKay Books. Link down below. In honor of starting that TikTok account, I have decided to read one of TikTok's most recommended book series. I seriously can't go like two books without seeing somebody say, read the Mindfuck series, read the Mindfuck series, and I'm like, okay, I'll read the Mindfuck series. So I got the ebooks on my phone because they're quite short, so I was just like, okay, let's just get the ebooks. The first book is called The Risk, and this is the first book in the Mindfuck series. I don't know what it's about. I just know that I love this lighting so much. I don't really know what this book series is about, but people swear that it's not like aggressively romantic, that there's like some fucked up shit that happens. So I'm ready to begin my foray. Thank you, sir. Not rude at all. Totally didn't interrupt me. Bitch. Anyway, let's get reading. Chat soon. Oh my gosh, okay, hi. I just started the book and I read for like an hour. I'm halfway through. I am enjoying it so fucking much. It's not even funny. I'm just gonna give you a quick synopsis of what this book is about after the camera focuses on me because I am the view and not the plants, all right? <laughs> um, all right, so the, this book opens up with us seeing this woman get flirted on and we learn that her name is Lana and that she has come from this very harsh past and that she is apparently a serial killer. I'm loving this. I am really loving this. I love her internal monologue. I love the way she thinks. I love the way she is. I love the way she exists. I'm getting some very They Never Learn vibes and the reason I'm bringing up They Never Learn is because, yes, there is a certain revenge component to this, but there's also, like, a huge sense that she enjoys what she's doing, and she keeps repeating in her head, I want to paint the walls red. I'm going to paint their walls red. I'm going to make them bleed. I'm going to use their blood as paint. I'm going to, mm, I'm going to fuck them up. I'm going to fuck these bitches up. And it's just like, I love that for her. And then we follow this other perspective, which is, like, a guy named Logan, who is an FBI agent that she's kind of seducing on the side. And yeah, I don't know. I'm quite enjoying this book. I'm quite invested. I, I wouldn't call it like a masterpiece. Um, like the writing isn't, you know, glorious, but you don't need fucking superfluous ass big five syllable words to tell a good story. And this is a good story. Super entertaining so far. I will check in soon. Chat soon. Uh. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this about this book, but I fucking love it. I am loving it so far. Bitch, let me just say that I don't normally go for books like this, like ones that look like have the covers that belong on Wattpad or something, and that could potentially, that's not a fart, that's me crunching the leaves under my feet. Wanna see the leaves? 
leaves. I'm talking about books that could potentially run the risk of being romantic because I just don't like doing that to myself. I'm not a huge romance fan. Sorry, I had to move because the neighbors were going wild again. Why do these people insist on having loud conversations outside their house with screaming involved? I don't know. Anyway, so I'm just like really enjoying this book so far. I was kind of nervous that this was going to be a high-key romance book. The books I normally see promoted on TikTok are ones that have like romance plots, like romance smut, <laughs> shit like that. I don't know if it's because of the people I follow or if that's just what the market enjoys, <laughs> but hey, I mean, it led me to this series, so I can't complain. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so what I'm really enjoying about this book so far is the really fun true crime insights because the, this Lana girl that I'm really digging so far, I'm really loving our female protagonist, she is canoodling, she's hooking up with this FBI agent, and some of the point of view comes from him. So him solving various crimes, the ones that she does included, is really interesting. The way he theorizes, the way he comes up with these theories about what these criminals are doing is really interesting to me. Also, Lana's backstory is wild. It is tragic. I can see why she wants to get revenge so bad. I'm cheering for her. I am attached to her. I want her to like fucking rip these men apart and what i love so much is that she wants to rip these men apart she feels no guilt she's like straight up i want to paint the ground red with blood i want to paint their walls red with blood red is my favorite color and the red from their blood and it's just like yes please fuck them up go lana i also learned something really disturbing some people can't achieve unless they are inflicting pain on others. So this book deals with crimes of that nature and it's just so like intense and dark. And that's one thing I didn't expect from this random book with a cover like this from TikTok that it would get this dark. So yeah, this is a huge surprise to me and it's a pleasant surprise because I was expecting like a corny romance book. So the fact that it is very like true crime heavy is interesting. It's also got some like smut interwoven into it, so I'm really digging that so far too. I also like that she's really smart. I love her inner monologue. I love how like bad she wants to kill people. The revenge is so cathartic. I'm just so obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm gonna try to read the whole thing for this vlog, okay? Probably gonna try to finish this book now. Thoughts later. Chat soon. finished it and it was so good. I fucking loved this book. I'm just gonna be really dramatic right now and say that this is one of the most satisfying good for her books I've ever read. Straight up, they never learn vibes. Maybe on that level. Maybe not quite on that level because this one was only like 150 pages-ish. So, I don't know. Maybe collectively the whole series could surpass that bar that that book has set. But so far, if it's gonna maintain this quality, I'm impressed. It just, it very well could. I got a quote for you. I got a quote here to read. This is the level of amazingness that is Lana's internal monologue. She goes, I want all his tears. I want his misery and terror. I want him degraded to the point that he has nothing but indignation and humiliation left and then I want his screams. This is proof that I can never read an audiobook because I fucking suck at reading out loud. Give me a book, make me read it, I can finish this in a day like an expert. Make me communicate the words with my mouth, not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen for us. What will happen for us, however, <laughs> is me reading the rest of this series because I'm thoroughly invested. This book was amazing. I'm gonna just go ahead and give this book like five stars right now. And yeah, I'm gonna read the second book like right now and chat soon. <laughs> See ya. The next day. Darling, you
Okay, bitch. Oh my gosh. So last night I started the second book in the Mindfuck series. Honestly, literally just in my head, it's like Mindfuck 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mindfuck 2, okay? That's what this book is called. I think the first book was called The Risk. Alright, so this book is really interesting so far. Um, the f ending of the first book ended with like a confrontation. The direction it does go in is very interesting and there is a significant conflict to be had. In addition to that, there is a new... I don't know if she was in the first book, but there was this woman named Lisa that comes into the story and she works in the same department as Logan, the guy that Lana is currently canoodling with on the side, the FBI agent that's currently investigating her, but she's like seeing him anyway, which is like, bro, what the fuck? So now we have a jealous bitch, we have two jealous bitches, and we have Lana and a killer on the loose. I don't know, I'm really liking it so far. Chat soon. Also, one more thing, can I just say that the person who recommended this book to me on TikTok straight up understood the assignment. They were like, there is a romance-ish that happens in here, but it does not overpower the story by any means. Like, a lot of the focus is put on the criminal investigation shit that's happening, and I'm really enjoying it. I don't read many detective novels, so I don't really have much to compare this to, but I am really enjoying it so far. The writing does step up from the first one. This one is significantly less muddy like this one does focus more on the crime aspect of the story which I am enjoying and the voice of Lana is just so I love her internal monologue so much even though she is more flawed and irrational and a bit more impulsive in this book it's believable okay I buy it I understand it I understand her and I'm ready to see what goes on what goes down Let's do this. <laughs> Chat soon. You know what? <laughs> One of the best feelings in the world is knowing that your camera is fully charged so you can have the viewfinder on and like use it to fix your hair. I take too long fixing myself using the viewfinder of the camera and it ends up like dying halfway through my filming. So right, let's talk about, I, so I finished book two in the Mindfuck series, and it's called Sidetracked. And let me just be fully transparent with you guys. So I was under the impression that I was gonna be hate reading this series, and I'm kind of obsessed. Okay, I'm kind of obsessed. So I finished book two, and I don't know, maybe four stars, five stars, either way, I really, really loved it. So the title of this book is Sidetracked, and that's very literal because in the second book, just to give you some perspective, Logan, the FBI guy that she was shagging, um, as the Brits like to say, he screwed up big time in the case that he was in charge of, and his screw up had major implications that put Lana in danger as well. So right now, she's in danger, he's trying to fix shit, it's a lot. There's a really nice quote that I really loved that encompasses her entire revenge subplot, describing the men she chooses to kill. She goes, Their sins stained my soul with so much darkness that their deaths are needed to cleanse me. That gave me goosebumps, okay? That gave me actual goosebumps. I'm kind of impressed with the darkness that this story goes to. In spite of this book's darkness, I can't emphasize enough how entertaining this is from a thriller slash crime perspective. I'm a thriller reader and I'm not bored. I'm not mad. I'm not regretting picking this series up at all so far. I don't know. I'm about to start book three. We'll see how that goes. The pacing is great. The dynamic between Lana and Logan is incredible. I really love how comfortable she is with certain people and how that changes her dialogue and what she shares, how she is. I also like how despite being sidetracked, despite the fact that this veers away from the path of the first book, kind of, there is still some revenge. There is still some satisfying revenge going on that I'm really enjoying. <laughs> the important point this book makes that I was happy to see, I like how this book talks about how in places like foster care and orphanages and basically centers where children that aren't cared for by their biological parents and such and such. This book talks about how these places, these centers, are where some of people's earliest abusers are found. Like in these establishments, children are very vulnerable 
and susceptible to abuse and disgusting adults do take advantage of them. So this book addresses that very well. Also the ending, the ending is so fucking good. The ending, oh my gosh, the way this book ends is like a major cliffhanger. I'm gonna start reading book three like right now. I need to, I need to start reading book three like right fucking now, okay? So I'm gonna do that, chat soon. The next day. Good morning. Hi. I'm here to speak my truth, and so is that crow that's ruining my audio, but what can you do? We're out in nature. Literally, if you watch nature vlogs and you expect it to sound like a fucking sound studio, that's on you. I mean, if you hear dogs barking, if you hear crows fucking, that's not my job, that's not my fault, that's not something I can control, that's something completely out of my personal circle of control. Alright, so don't complain, and if you do, um... You're crazy! What the fuck? Do you know what is in my circle of control? The actual fact that I read book three in the Mindfuck series so fucking fast that I couldn't vlog my, my, myself, my emotions, my being, my, my who I am as a person because I was getting through that book faster than you can say Fuck me in the titties. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about book three, Scarlet Angel, in the Mindfuck series. When I say that this book started off with a bang, a motherfucking bang, is an understatement to how this book opens up to the world. She spread her legs with confidence. This fucking book spread its legs with confidence and was like, here the fuck I am. And I was like, not into that, but what am I saying? What the fuck? The way this book busted it open. So this book reminds me of the movies Kill Bill. Kill Bill 1 and Kill Bill 2. Quentin Tarantino's masterpiece, you know, we all love that film. And if you don't, get the fuck out, bitch. Lana has so much fire, and she's so capable, and she's so fierce. And yes, some people might be like, okay, this is a bit unrealistic. But then it's like, finally, it's a story about women hitting back. Okay, it's unlikely that she's able to do every single thing that this book says she's able to do. But bitch, bitch, how many movies and books have you seen where men were like that, right? So it's about time we got some motherfucking equality. The reason she is getting revenge is because of something that had happened to her in the past. And you get to learn more about that night in this book, specifically what happened to her brother. And it just made me so angry. Okay, it just made me want to slap a bitch, made me want to punch a bitch, made me want to cut a bitch. You know all the things one could do to a bitch I wanted to do while reading about this fucking shit, okay? There's a scene that is so intense in this book. It's not really a spoiler, but it's a scene where a house gets searched. My asshole clenched, okay? Also, can I just say chapter 12? Can I just say chapter 12? That's not a spoiler to suggest that shit occurs in this book, but chapter 12? Okay. Focus on me. Chapter 12, okay, bitch. Book 3, chapter 12. When you get to that chapter, motherfucker, you better motherfucking DM me because... Because. Because. Okay? Just do it. Alright, so I'm gonna get into a bit of spoilers now. So if you are in any way sensitive to spoilers, if they taint your soul, if they ruin your vibe, if they make you feel less than as a person, you might want to click off. Or better yet, stay on this video, because I'm gonna put this logo up here, and you can just mute me and tap 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 until you don't see this logo anymore, and the spoiler will be over. So here's the spoiler. The scene when they searched Jake's house, and when they searched the van, and when he went into that place with the people with disabilities, when they were searching him, when they were doubting him, when they were doubting his story, the veracity of his story, I was like, bitch, the fuck, bitch, and Lana was in the box, bitch. And then chapter 12, I literally just need to get into this because this was amazing. I think the guy's name is Morgan. It starts with an M. Who cares about these fucking guys' names, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. When she like fucks him up and lubes him up, I was like, why is she lubing him up? And then she explains that it makes the burning sensation and, and pain last longer. I was like, and I love how ST Abby keeps cutting back to the scenes, the actual fucking scenes where, you know, shit happened that night in the past. So it fuels your anger and then it gives you that extra level of catharsis when Lana is like fucking people up. It's just like, yes, give it to me. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then in the end, when the fountain in the town was bleeding, and she was like, I'm back, motherfuckers, I was like, Okay, spoilers are over, spoilers are over. Obviously, I gave book three five stars. It was amazing. It was the best. It was the bitch. It was the shit. It was all the fucking thing. It, this is probably becoming my favorite thriller series of all time. I mean, literally name one better. I can't. This is just so good. It's just too- it's too good. It is too good. You all need to read this right now. I swear by this series. Okay, maybe books four and five are shit, but books one, two, and three, bitches. Get on this right now. Just do it, okay? Just trust me on this because if you've doubted me in the past, this is now the time to not doubt me. I know the covers are hideous. I know they don't speak to your soul. I know they don't speak to your being, but trust me this one time. This is the moment, okay? I'm gonna go read book four like right now and it's gonna probably speak to me spiritually because of how good I'm enjoying this. So yeah, chat soon. Later that day. Hello, my darlings. Hi. Okay, um, it is significantly later and my camera still refuses to focus on me because it thinks the plants are more attractive, <laughs> bitch. Not you, the camera. Anyway, anyway, so I am, I'm gonna say about 40% into book four, book four being called All the Lies by S.T. Abby, Stabby S.T. Abby, the genius who penned this magnificent work of art. Still, no spoilers, but this book opens up with us learning pretty much everything that happened that night. And I feel rage and I want death to the entire town. Lana does this thing to prove that she's getting more reckless. Yes, the story needs to give us some flaws, some weaknesses, show us that things are ultimately out of her circle of control. But I'm like, no, no, I like the superpower Lana. But look, I appreciate the fact that the author is like, okay, we can't totally make her Mary Sue. But yeah, that's what I'm getting so far with the vibes of this book. I think this is trying to ground her and make us feel about more about her humanity and bring her down to earth, that's what I think. We'll see what happens. Personally, I am expecting a stroke of genius to pop up at some point, as it normally does with this story. But yeah, we'll see what happens, and I'm gonna keep reading, and I will update you as updates go. Later. Later that day. Hey everyone, so it's currently around 4 p.m. and I am joined with my lovely friend Danny. Say hi. Hi. Hey. And we are watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film on Netflix. It's been really fun so far. I've been screaming. Have you been screaming? Yes. We have been yeah. screaming. We have been like literally screaming and losing it the whole time. And that is a, is that sounds like a chainsaw next door, honestly. And I will chat soon. So I just got to a scene that I really liked, and that involved, um, well, as you know, this book has two points of view. You have Lana, you have Logan, and his point of view is that of law enforcement. And I normally don't like that sort of point of view, but this time around, I actually don't really mind because I do like hearing where he's at for the sake of knowing how Lana knows more than him, you know? So I do like this sentiment he broached in this certain section in this book, he was talking to his partner, Leonard, and Leonard was basically talking about whether or not one could justify the actions of a killer if they were killing other bad guys. And Logan rebuts that by saying, killing is still killing, and if this person gets used to killing and the idea of being the judge, jury, and executioner, power could be abused and this person could get corrupted and just ultimately lose all of their humanity and always take justice into their own hands, vigilante justice, things of that sort. That reminded me so much of the anime Death Note, highly recommended, one of my faves, because that series also broaches the notion that humans are, that, that all humans are ultimately imperfect and that if you give one person too much power, if you make them the sole arbiter of justice without any checks and balances, you know, without any check on the power that they are imposing on other people, then they will get corrupt because ultimate power ultimately corrupts people basically, and that's so good, and I just love how this book has that. And this series, like, literally, sure, it's not like Charles Dickens or whatever, Leo Tolstoy, masterpiece, whatever, but I would rather read a kick-ass story with decent writing over flowery, amazing, superfluous writing 
for a story I don't give a fuck about, okay? This series is fucking amazing. It's so good. It's so fucking amazing. I just can't even put that into words. And I really love the scenes when Logan and his partner bounce off theories from one another and we see them arrive at things that we already know based on what we know from Lana, right? Like seeing them, you know, piece things together, seeing them arrive at a conclusion we already know should be boring, but it's not. For some reason, it is not boring in this book. I think I have a new favorite thriller series. I don't know, book four is killing it so far. We'll see how book five goes. We'll see. Chat soon. Currently going on my walk because, I mean, I don't know how certain people can just sit down and read for hours at a time. My attention span just cannot accommodate that level of mental um, <laughs> usage. I don't know if I'm making sense. I just got off from reading. Okay, I think I need to catch up on season four of Euphoria. I'm seeing spoilers on the Facebook, okay? So I think I need to maybe watch, at least watch episode one later after I get all the shit I need to do done today, okay? Loved season one, only watched it for the first time this year. Kind of want to wait for all the episodes of season two to come out before I can continue on because, you know, I hate fucking waiting every single week. Attack on Titan makes me do that all the time and I just, I just cannot, okay? I wish I could go on vacation here. Wow. Oh my god. What the fuck? I don't even know what I'm doing. Um... Boss fight took me forever. <sighs> All right, hey everyone. I'm here to do several things right now. The first thing is inform. The second thing is communicate. And the third thing is freak the fuck out because bitch, I, I finished book four in the Mindfuck series. It is almost evening. It's very late afternoon. I am glad I finished it while the sun was still up because we live for that actual natural lighting. And I'm sorry if you hear things in the background, but literally every single time I turn my camera on, the neighbor decides to make some kind of noise, either construction work, using power tools, making the dog bark. I, I literally don't give a fuck. So we're just gonna add this to the chaotic energy and if you hear someone banging away somewhere, just meditate, do yoga or some shit, because I don't fucking care. So when we learn of the death of Lana slash Victoria's dad, I was just like, I want this bitch to fuck these bitches up so badly. Like, while I was reading that scene, I was just like, I had to like put the phone down, put the book away, put the ebook away, and just like take a step back and compose myself you know, engage in some soulful self-realization and come back to my center so I wouldn't explode in a fit of unmitigated rage. Is that even the word that I need to use? I don't fucking know, but bitch, b -b 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 bitch, that backstory pissed me off, okay? But you know, chapter 10, bitch, chapter 12, bitch, end of chapter 13, bitch. Not really a spoiler, but I kind of screamed in a scene when someone spat gum in somebody else's hair. A bitch cheered, and the bitch was me. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna get into a bit of spoilers over here, because I just need to discuss some scenes that spoke to me. All right, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of spoilers now. I'm just gonna put like this thing, this image over here of like a spoiler warning, and you know the drill, just tap, tap, tap. And when this is out, you can continue watching, okay? Okay. Bitch, chapter 10, the haunted house, people getting murdered, thinking it's fake, and cheering for these bitch ass sacks of shit who aided the murder to die was a vibe that I lived for. Someone needs to turn this into a TV series. I swear, this needs to become a limited series at some point, or like, I don't know, three seasons. We need to explore the beauty of this story in the medium of film or TV. Just somebody make it. And then chapter 12 was when Kyle was getting tortured. 
Okay, so like this novel isn't like, you know, torture porn, so we don't actually see her, you know, getting into it, but like they show you just enough to be like, okay, okay, I'm happy about that. But like, bitch, oh my gosh, in the end, when like Logan hate fucks her, I was just like, bitch, you don't know what you're doing. Like, you don't know what's up. Like, you need to figure shit, you need to like seek to understand before seeking to be understood. I forgot what self-help book that I was forced to read had that specific quote. It's like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what kind of energy he's fucking around with right now. And he's just, he's just like, he's fucked. I mean, look, I hate romance, okay? So the fact that she could be taking out a romantic subplot doesn't really bother me. Yeah, I normally hate romance, but in this book it's not like super cringe so far. Like, yes, there's the occasional like, oh, I love you, you're my weakness, be 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 be. But like, for the most part, people getting fucked, people getting killed, people getting fucked up, okay? It's got like a, a really good ratio, 90% murder, 10% romance. Okay, anything more than that and I will start vomiting and hating your book. All right, so the spoilers are over. Um, I am gonna start book five. Just kidding, I already started book five because I just could not stop reading this book. Okay, okay, you know, let me talk about book five. Let's see what I can say about book five. Okay, it starts off with a bang. It starts off so well. I love the commentary on how book five opens up. It's like, yeah, she's a serial killer, but people who kill other evil people, like, you know, people in law enforcement are allowed to kill evil people just because they have a government badge. But how is what he's doing different from her? Okay, I mean, like, he's not torturing people to death. <laughs> Given what she went through in life, I mean, I'm not mad. Like, I'm not that pissed at her. Yeah, here's the quote. Because the law says it's wrong to exact revenge on monsters unless you have a badge or a government decree. Commentary. What do you think, guys? Comment down below. I also love this quote that she says, Funny thing about death, someone has to do a damn good job killing a girl like me, and so far, everyone has sucked. Tell it like it is, Lana. Yeah, I'm just gonna continue reading. So, so far we learned everything about the people who were there and what happened that night, but now we're learning more about the backstory and how everything got covered up, and the string of events that specifically led to that fateful evening. All right, I'm gonna continue reading. I might need to do like full spoilers for book five because there's so much shit I need to talk about. But yeah, we're gonna chat soon. I'm almost done with this vlog and this vlog has been amazing. This book has been amazing. I'm gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna make some coffee. I'm gonna make some snacks. Ch chat soon. Hey everyone, apologies for being really sweaty and looking like a general mess. Um, I have been feeling really burnt out for the past couple of days. So today's to-do list is honestly just do a yoga session, <laughs> get a run in, and eat a plant, okay? Making it easy for myself so I don't, you know, just freak out. The first two things are done. As you can see, I am a sweaty mess. I was running out in the sun. Yoga with Adrian, thank you very much for that vinyasa. And now I'm gonna eat some food. <laughs> All right, so on the menu, we've got mixed vegetables. Um, and shrimp. That looks really good. I'm gonna heat this up and start editing this vlog. Fun times. Hey everyone, I'm currently heading out about to film my reaction to the finale of the Mindfuck series. Um, obviously, I can't divulge much because it's book five and spoilers, but I'll tell you about the vibes and I will likely reserve a spoiler section in the end for people who have read the book and want to know about certain scenes and then maybe play some video games make a snack uh, <laughs> and try to mentally recover from finishing one of my probably new favorite series I don't know we'll see excuse the birds Battle of Resident Evil 5. Gotta find Wesker. I don't know where he's at, but the fight before this was so fucking difficult. I'm not even. Oh shit.
All right, here goes. This looks like hentai. Bam! Chris Redfield Boulder Punch. I have achieved a milestone. This boss fight took me almost a fucking hour. All right, about to document the the final chapters of the final book in the Mindfuck series. I don't know if I can handle the pain of probably my new favorite book series coming to an end. I'm so mad that it's gonna be over and that there's not gonna be anything more after this. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, so let me set the stage. So all hell is breaking loose. And I thought that ST Abby was kind of gonna chill during the finale because, you know, one of the big things already happened in the prior book. There's no chill. ST Abby has gone full scorched earth. No exaggeration. Okay, I'm gonna read now. I'm scared. Let's do this. I don't even want to say what this book reminds me of. To say that shit just went down is an understatement. I gotta go. I gotta go. All right, hi. So I just love how St. Abby went full on scorched earth in the finale. Like this was a proper finale if I ever saw one. So chill, calm your tits, calm your dicks, calm your assholes. I'm not a big series reader, so I really don't have much to compare this to. The only thing I'm really basing all of this off of is my gut reaction and my overall emotion and the catharsis I felt at the very end, and oh boy! <laughs> all right, so before I get into spoilers, I just need to say that I loved this book so much. I loved this series so much. I loved the characters so much. The catharsis, the revenge, the crime stuff, it wasn't overbearingly romantic, it was thrilling, it completely justifies its length. This series is incredible, and I love it so fucking much. Okay, look, I mean, Throne of Glass is still gonna be like my all-time favorite series because it just has a special place in my heart. I'm gonna say this is my favorite thriller series of all time, okay? But this is like one that I'm not gonna be shutting up about. I'm gonna make this my brand. I'm gonna recommend this to everybody. It is amazing. I love it. I love it so much. So assume there is a fence. Should you be on the fence and wondering whether or not you should read this book or not, read it. Trust me, if you like what I like, if you like women who kill in fiction, bitch, read this fucking thing now, okay? Did I just, did I just wink? Oh my gosh, I'm so crazy. Anyway, so I am gonna get into some spoilers now. So if you don't wanna see the spoilers and if you have not read this series yet or have not read book five yet, I'm gonna put this up over here, and you know the drill, mute me, tap, 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 until you don't see this anymore, and then you'll be safe. And not at risk, the risk, oh, of spoilers, pun intended. I was so scared that this was gonna turn into like a mushy romantic ending, but bitch, the way she ends this book gave me chills, and it was epic, it was awesome. Okay, so first some scenes in this book that I really enjoyed was when she guts the judge and the scene when she hides in the closet, when she assassinates those two guys that are trying to kill that one woman with the kid and then she hides in the closet and then Logan gets into the house without her knowing he was going there. So she's in the closet and she's like, oh shit, she runs into the woods, Logan goes after her and he apologizes for hate fucking her brains out. I was kind of hoping that they wouldn't end up together and that she would end up killing him. But the way the book ended totally compensated for that because I was like, okay, this is gonna be super romance. I'm not into it. This is not what I'm into. This is not what I'm here for. But like, bitch, hi, bitch. What the fuck, bitch? Mm. And I really love how she explains her name. Lana is Hawaiian for a float and Myers is Michael Myers because her dad loves horror movies and she loves horror movies and they love horror movies and it's so good. I love it. <laughs> and then when she kills the dad of Kyle, like, a tribute to Psycho in the bath. It was just living out her horror movie fantasy, living her best life, yes, yes please. And then when she plays the footage of that night, I was like, oh shit, I am so sorry. This is gonna fuck Logan up for life, having to see his girlfriend getting 
by a bunch of people. I wish she'd warned him first. Some minutes ago, I was like saying I was about to cry, um, and I almost did, and this was in the scene when she gets shot by the machine gun, and she sees the face of her brother. Oh my gosh, can I just talk about the, um, the major plot twist at the end? You know, finding out that Christopher Denver, the dad's best friend and lawyer, you know, was the, or was the OG killer? What? What? Did I just read? St. Abby is like a genius, honestly. Stabby is a genius. It reads like she planned this twist from the start. Apparently they sell this book in an omnibus form, so it's like a near 700 page collection of the entire series. And I feel like the entire series works so well that it completely would justify a 700 page length because it's so good! And then to prove his love and dedication and loyalty to Lana, Logan shoots him in the dick. Mm. And I love how she changed her name to Lana Voorhees at the end because like, okay, we love some Jason up in here, all right? And I thought it was going to be like an all's well that ends well, oh here's a pretty bow for everything to be tied into, but bitch, the fact, the fact that he was like collecting people for her to continue killing and that he was like, you know, just being there and supporting her as she killed people with the music playing, perfection. Perfection. All right, spoilers are over. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for watching. That's gonna be it. Like and comment and subscribe. Share this video with someone who is on that fence I alluded to to convince them to read this series right now. Credit where credit's due. TikTok did very well. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope to see you in future videos. And as always, take care. I lose myself in this city now.